and okay. we are live. Fred, take it away. All right. Good evening. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to our panel today. It's a it's a it's a it's a panel about uh, taking ideas and taking them from uh, from just concept and then going to international markets and basically getting the right start to your startup. Right. My name is Farid. Um, I'm the program director and GP at Startup Wise Guys. Uh, previously, I was also the managing director at uh, Wise Guys Cyber. Uh, and uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to speak to fellow startupers, people uh, like you in the audience who are who started off this journey about a year ago, two years ago, more than that. And they're going to we're just going to talk to them about their journey, the mistakes they made, and, and how they came to where they are today. Okay, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get them to introduce themselves in a in a short while. We're also having this amazing technical. Uh, we have this technical, uh, you know, switching between cameras. So I hope this goes well. Um, and for all of you who are watching us online on Facebook and on LinkedIn, you can ask questions throughout the the 55 minute conversation that we're gonna have panel that we're gonna have over here. You can ask them in the comment section on Facebook and uh, those questions will then come up over here and we can ask our panelists. So make sure that you're doing that. Um, and uh, the more you interact, uh, the more interesting this is gonna be. Um, I'm gonna now quickly uh, introduce our amazing panelists who are who are here. Uh, let, let me pass on first. Um, they're gonna, so the panelists, thanks a lot for being here. Uh, I'd love for you guys to introduce yourself, uh, your company, and what you guys do in about a minute each. So let's start with top to bottom on my right. So I'm going to start with Marco. Marco, why don't you start first? Hello, my name is Marco. Uh, I'm the CEO of Sentinel. Uh, actually, we mean Sentinel. And what we do, we build intelligence, strategic support software, and partner with other kind of systems for uh, the health industry and user. And also my own background is defense-related and military-related. I spent more than 30 years in the service. It's okay, really great. great. Okay, great, Marco. Um, so, Sensa Septima, CEO, co-founder. Uh, Marco, move the move the um, laptop a little bit closer to you again, a little bit, so we can get a little bit better on the mic. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit better, I think. Um, we'll we'll figure out as we go along. And you also mentioned that you're from uh, you had a military and defense background, and your startup is also focused in that space as well. So so that's great. So we're going to have some interesting conversations there. Um, next we have Yuri from Hive ID. Hey Yuri, come on, introduce yourself. Yeah. Hey Farid. Um, thanks for having having me today. And um, hey everyone in the audience. Uh, nice meeting you. I'm Yuri. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Hive Identity. And uh, we help companies of all sizes onboard more customers with less risk and less friction. Uh, essentially, we are comprising different products like identity verification and passwordless authentication, which make up our modern identity platform. All right. Thanks a lot, Yuri. So you're working a lot with ID and making uh, you know the cybersecurity of the future, so to speak. Um, yeah, I, I always like it when we have um, when we have like bets that we put in uh, in the future uh, with Marco as well. We have like bets of you know the the defense and the military, which normally is quite long term, uh, but always game changing. So so welcome to the panel, Yuri. Thank you. Uh, third up, uh, we've got uh, Daniel. Daniel from Syax. Daniel, over to you. Hi. Thanks for having me as well, and hi all to the audience. I'm Daniel, I'm a co-founder and the CFO of Cyx. We actually building Rutino. It's a platform, a VR power B2B platform where the, the employees can scale up their uh, average knowledge. We come from cybersecurity teaching, but right now we are concentrating in more domains like workplace health and safety and so on. Okay, so uh, a, a platform that helps people uh, with uh, with uh, with cyber education and well, basically cyber awareness. Uh, and you guys are actually, I, I, what the interesting thing you said was you're using VR. Did you say virtual reality to 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 build that as well? 
yeah, basically we're trying to educate people with, uh, through realistic simulations. And mm. uh, one of our simulation type, when we make a 300 degree uh, virtual copy of uh, um, environment, whatever is an office or mm. it's uh, industrial something, and we can teach the the workflows in in realistic places. Okay, so so a pretty relevant uh, place to be. Thanks thanks to all the the homeworking that we guys are doing, right? So, okay, so great. So we have uh, we have everybody introduced. Uh, uh, we also have uh, you know questions again. If anybody wants to ask questions, you can start typing them. Not the panelists, but anybody watching, you can start typing them in Facebook and in LinkedIn. But before that, I'm going to start off this because I think the, the, there's a reason why we assembled this particular crew of people. And it wasn't the beards. I was told that this is a very male beard organized of different stages. But it definitely wasn't the beards. It was, it was, it was because uh, one of the things that we really wanted to get um, an idea from, from, from all of you. So I'm going to start first with, uh, with Yuri here. Yuri, um, Tell us like a little bit about how you guys started with your idea and what you guys did to kind of move your idea forward. Um, because a lot of the people who are watching are people, you know, who have some ideas who, you know, uh, don't know what the next step probably was. So kind of give us about a minute or uh, of, of what you guys did and how you guys got started. Uh, so, yeah, the basically the idea came about uh, from the uh, personal experience, really, mm -hmm. uh, because me and my co-founder, we had uh, we had another business. Um, four years ago, uh, and we started uh, back back in the US, we started uh, an online marketplace. And, you know, to cut the long story short, basically, we, we were hit with um, so much fraud that we, we had to take a step back and um, kind of think where, where, where it's coming from and what, what are the modern ways to, to combat that, right? Um, and apparently, um, you know, it all boiled down to a simple fact that uh, we are nobody online and uh, we can be anyone online. And that's where the majority of fraud comes in, that we don't have um, kind of a, a proven way um, to uh, verify ourselves and, and uh, we don't have um, kind of a self-identity online. So uh, that, that was the root of the idea. And um, back then it was um, kind of a bit different um, to, to, to say the least, uh, because you know the, the way, there were some assumptions that, that were made and uh, Obviously, they had to be verified um, along the journey, and uh, we pivoted a bit. But the the main idea hasn't changed. The vision hasn't changed. We uh, we we are still big proponents of uh, digital identity, a kind of a strong um, identity that that people can use online to interact with the businesses. Um, and um, yeah, okay. so, uh, so so you guys came up with this idea. What happened then? I mean, did you guys like uh, say, okay, we're just gonna build it, or did you guys go, okay, let's go validate it, or did you guys go like? Oh, I, I need to know what I do next now. Like, what happened? Like, uh, basically, uh, so so yeah. We once once we kind of pinpointed the uh, the root of the problem, we we did more research on the subject, and we actually realized that that the whole thing was was even bigger uh, than than we initially thought. And mm -hmm. uh, so we did more research on the subject and and pinpointed certain areas where um, you know there wasn't enough expertise in uh, in uh, in cybersecurity and. Uh, there wasn't enough expertise in identity itself, okay. um, and we kind of started tackling those uh, those issues and making again, you know, making more assumptions along the way and then validating those. Okay, great. So, so here's a fun fact for you, and one of the things that was important to bring out for me was the fact that all three of you have a different journey. So you you actually went from that you built the product, and did you then? You know, did you because you went through the wise guys on, online pre accelerator? Did that happen? How many years after you guys came up with the idea, or was it just you know six months? I'm I'm trying to get I'm trying to get people to understand like how how quick or long was the journey to get to the point where you came to the OPA? Right. Uh, well, yeah, that was that was about a year later, um, mm -hmm. more or less, like maybe nine 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 ten months, but. Okay. Uh, uh, to be honest, it, it was kind of um, it wasn't um, you know uh, a decision that ten months later we'll go to an online yeah. acceleration program, right? It it was just more of a circumstantial thing, and uh, basically we were we were building the product away, and, and there was a conference and there was a pitch competition where we took part, and yeah. there was uh, one of the representatives of uh, Startup Wise guys there, and we had a chat, 
And at, at that point, we already understood, you know, what acceleration program can do and, and how much value it can bring you in a short span of time. Um, and there was a cybersecurity focus batch due to start later on that year. Um, the online pre-accelerator was um, kind of, um, you know, prior to that. So we decided we might as well join in and get, you know, get get the, the needed expertise and advice online first and then yeah. evaluate our options for the uh, for the physical program as well, which we ultimately joined. Okay. So so to summarize, you guys like were for, you had a business um, like, you know, started a startup, you found problems, you guys decided there was a problem to be solved. You you kind of iterated on that problem. Nine months later, you joined an online pre accelerator and then, you know, the journey will continue. So great, yep. great um, kind of, uh, you know, kind of background story over here. So kind of people understand. Marco, over to you now. The reason uh, moving to you purely because um both yourselves and daniel you guys come from a consulting background in fact i remember speaking to marco for the first time i don't know whether you remember we spoke when you were at singapore airport right now tell me a little bit of your journey of how you guys came up with the idea yeah. and what you guys did next and you know how long was this idea incubating in your head and and you know how did you bring it to this is what we want to do and this is this is how we're going to do it Yeah, first of all, I hope I'm here at this very moment, no echo anymore. So um, as I told you, my background is military. Uh, I did <laughs> more tours than normal person in countries like Afghanistan and Iraq. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a story of uh, personal pain. Uh, I mean, all those tours, uh, what I did, we had the support of amazing technology. I mean, you have unmanned aerial vehicles that are able to sniff explosives three kilometers above. You have software that creates patterns of life to see what roads humans and, and locals are avoiding. You have all those technology. Uh, and, and let's be honest, we still had heavy, heavy casualties amongst the uh, ourselves, the coalition forces, and also more sadly in the civilian population. And uh, in there, it was, I think it was 2013 when I first questioned myself, like, why is this happening? I mean, let's be honest, our uh, our adversary, the Taliban or, or Al-Qaeda, they have Stone Age weapons like AK-47s and, and you know. Um, and then I realized that all this no new technology, what has been created, has been created with the sole purpose of collecting information. And the problematical part is that the information amount is just so big to put it in context. So then I started to figure out the ways how to, this could be been improved. And um, once I left the army in 2013, end of 2013, uh, I started to work as a consultant uh, in the defense industry. Uh, worked myself up through various positions, gathered the background, but this idea was always in my mind. And in 2017, uh, it was the very first time when I pulled myself together. Uh -huh. I uh, kept Murphy's Law of Combat uh, rules four and five back in my head. And I uh, approached uh, throughout my contacts, throughout the defense industry, mapping out the actual capabilities uh, or, or actual requirements to set up a business. And if in no case problem. you are wondering what Murphy's Law of Combat four and five is, they're actually uh, rule number four is there is always a way, and rule number five is that the easy way is mind. Okay. So, so, you have to so the hard uh, way. yeah, uh, and so, uh, so, so this is 30, hold on. So 2013, you guys, you kind of had a self thought. 2015, 2017, you said you started kind of mapping the problem out and things like that. Now you're at 2020, the start of 2000, well, the end of 2020. So how did it develop from 2017 to 2020? What did you do? Did you just have it at the back of your head? Did you build on it? So first of all, I mapped out all the crazy people like me. <laughs> this is how I kind of gathered the uh, network of current co-founders. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also started the very first initial approach to the, uh, to the MODs and to the defense forces. But uh, on the defense industry, the biggest problem is that everything Okay, he's gonna he's gonna jump back in soon. But this is the fun. Of, oh, there we go. Is, 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 <laughs> when we talk about <laughs> about MLDs. Yeah, I mean that's why he's he's probably he's probably muted by for, by somebody in the background. But uh, while we get Marco back, Daniel, let's move to you because I know I know I know that you know the, the Marco story started 2013. 
Yuri's story started with a previous startup that he'd found, founded. Daniel, quickly, tell, tell us a little bit about you, like how you and your team started. Uh, like, When did you get the idea? How did you go about it? What were the steps you took? Okay. Uh, well, basically, I'm coming from cybersecurity as my co-founder as well. Uh, as a consultant, and I really love to see the, the people in cyberspace. Uh, it's kind of a hobby. And uh, we went in an international um, competition to Genoa in Switzerland with, with my co-founder. And during this competition, uh, we just find uh, a huge problem, and we gave a hypothetic um, solution for that and in the end of this competition i just went to uh, my co-founder and said hey dan his name is dan as well um don't we do something cool like the, this uh hypothetic uh, simulation uh, uh solution and he said yeah he has this idea since few years it was um 2018 mm -hmm. i mean this this uh, competition and then we have no idea what the startup, what how this whole things works. We just uh, knew that we want to make some cool things. Uh, so we planned the whole uh, I don't know, like uh, with with lots of buzzwords. So we wanted to make an AI based uh, post crypto quantum whatever you want to say. We we okay. wanted to build in. Uh, and we started to look around, okay, what's happening around us? We don't had really a, a business knowledge. And then we started to learn. Um, and in the end of 2018, we established a company in Estonia uh, because it's looked a pretty cool place to establish a company. Yeah. And uh, then during, I think, in so you, January. Till, till, till 2018, you guys had no idea what you were building. But the yeah, basically, yeah. Company, yeah. You had this I mean, like, amazing hypothetical pitch yeah, that will impress people. Okay. Go we, on. we had a huge vision. Uh, actually, the vision is still here. But uh, then during this uh, 2019, during the accelerator program, uh, we just clarified what are we doing and what we want to do and how can it turn to business. Mm -hmm. Then we come back to our country uh started to build the product and the business itself as well and um i guess even if there was this COVID situation we could uh, continue the negotiations with the first customers even if the whole process was much slower as yeah. we thought uh before but there was a good um result of this pandemic for us at least um uh, that uh we find that well we knew previously that this whole platform what we are building can use for other domains as well but we didn't really work with this and during okay. the summer um uh, it's come up from the okay. needs and that's it okay so 2017 you guys met 2018 started a company and till 2019 you kind of had no idea what you were building and then you kind of started building it in 2019 right I'm kind of just showcasing yeah. that you might have an idea, like Marco had an idea in 2013, well, a problem, and then he kind of developed what the idea could be. Yuri started a bit earlier as well. So I just wanted people to understand that the journey to take your idea and slowly kind of build on it can be like everybody else's journey is different. And uh, you can have different ways. I mean, just to give an example, both all three of you have gone through the Cyber North program, uh, which is a cybersecurity AI and defense uh, startup accelerator with wise guys. Uh, Yuri, you went through the online program as well before you went to this, right? So, all, and all of you are at different stages, uh, and we're going to talk about that as well. Uh, Marco, glad to have you back. But uh, um, so you were talking something about the MOD, uh, and then you you kind of mapped it. But I mean, till 2020, you guys had not built anything, right? You guys were were kind of conceptualizing. You kind of had all the wireframes in your head. And then it's 2020 when you really kind of kicked the, the ground running for whatever reason. Uh, and you kind of started uh, to the journey where now, you know, you're, you've got sense of septima. Um, and we're going to talk about what you guys, all of you have achieved, right? So 2013, uh, Yuri as well, like, you know, three, four years ago, you, got, you guys started uh, and Daniel as well. So it's taken time. 
Uh, and you know, this kind of stole the kind of, to me, this shows like the stamina uh, and the kind of willingness and the, you know, the, let's say the thick skin that each of you have to kind of be here. So now the next question we're going to, so this is trying to set a bit of a, a, a you know, a, 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 a background story to all your journeys, right? Now we're going to start with some questions, which I think are probably, I'm happy if you want to unmute and, and answer them. Uh, if two people unmute together, we just let one person go and then the other person can follow. But these are some of the questions that I think, um, you know, I, I would say are, are questions that a lot of people are thinking about. So, um, it, you know, now let's assume somebody has an idea. What do you what do you think is the most important thing they should do next? So one of the members over here is like, oh, I have this idea. I'm going to build a sauna bus. Like, what do we do? Like, I have an idea. I'm going to build. I don't know a notification for CISOs. What do you, what do you do? What do they do next? What what is the one thing that you guys would advise them to do next that worked for you really well? Let me read about that. I would actually suggest the validation of the idea. The understanding is this idea worth of solving because first of all, everybody's this those ideas come from some kind of pain, uh, and it has to be kind of personal as well. And you wanna you wanna really 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 solve this. Uh, at this very moment, the, the biggest reason why we are being in a successful position is, first of all, the CyberNord program, because Farid, sorry for saying that, but you really kind of kicked me out of my own comfortability zone and make me move a lot faster. And the second thing is that um, it's, it's a personal comfortability zone as well, because if you are doing a startup, that means that you literally have to take some personal risks. Because at this very moment, if you're if you're not going to put 100% on under your this effort, there will be no actual effects. Okay. So when you get to that 100%, then then, then that that's the time to that's the time to to, to kick uh, kick yourself um, out of your comfort zone. Any of you guys have any any particular thing that you think worked for you very well? I mean, even if it didn't work for you originally, but something that really did work for you from an idea perspective, like how do you take it to the next step? What go on, Yuri? Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, well, I was gonna say pretty much the same. Um, like validation is king, obviously, when you have an idea, and uh, uh, you know, first of all, validate that there is a market for it and there is actual actual need for it, and and you're 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 not the only one kind of needing that product, right? To solve your own needs. Um, so uh, so yeah, validation is is first of all, and uh, as Marco said, you know, giving giving kind of once once you validated that and once you definitely know that yes uh we, we are going for this and and let's do this then um absolutely i agree you know giving it less than 100 percent would never work and uh and you you re really have to give it all and um um you know stretch yourself in many ways uh to, you, build um, you know to when make you it work. build your pitch decks because some of you actually said that you had um, I'm kind of thinking like now I have an idea. Do I build a pitch deck or do I go validate? Basically, when when we arrived to the program uh, in 2019, the beginning, we even didn't, really didn't know what the hell is a uh, pitch deck. I mean, we knew what is one pager, but we didn't know what's pitch deck. So this was the first time. <laughs> okay. And okay, if so. if I can add something to the previous yeah. question. Uh, I think there is one more thing what is really important in the beginning, real beginning. You have to find um, those people who can support you. I mean, even your family, but even a, a good co-founder, because there were shitty situations, I would say. But uh, one thing was always uh, sure that we can talk with my co-founder. So, it's, I think, really important in the beginning. Fantastic. So, Daniel, I'm glad, glad you mentioned it because this is one of the questions I have um, over here, which is like, okay, what would be one thing? I mean, one way to, to basically check whether the co-founder you have is good or not. So let's start with Daniel. We go down. And the funny thing is all three of you over here, for whatever reason, have um, very interesting relationships with your co-founders, uh, relationships that I've seen kind of go up and down and, you know, roller coaster. Um, and are still roller coasting, but uh, you know it's good to understand because it is one of the biggest reasons why startups kind of split is because of co-founders and co-founder issues. So Daniel, uh, quick because your co-founder is also called Daniel, so not only yeah. do you have a common name, uh, 
Uh, uh, that's the only thing. <laughs> what, <laughs> no, what no, 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 for sure, no. <laughs> you would check, uh, with, like, you know, that you guys are... I, I think, well, from my, my opinion, you cannot, well, I think you cannot search for a co-founder. I mean, it will, it will come. Uh, in our situation, uh, what's happened, we both uh, making our PhD and actually we met uh, with each other 2016 in a summer camp. Yeah, that's kind of summer camp, uh, a PhD summer camp. And uh, we've, we just um, become closer and closer time by time. And we spun this um, competition together, what I just mentioned. And it was so natural, actually. Would you do this alone? Would no, alone? I mean, I mean, no, no. I think it's it's important to have um, someone because you can really uh, focus in something which is maybe not the best, and your co-founder can say, "Hey, it's maybe not the best," but uh, okay, it works good. together. Okay, well, Yuri, over to you, quick. Um, give us a rundown of like, what do you think is the importance of a co-founder? How do you guys pick each other? Uh, and like, uh, would you do this on your own? Uh, yeah, well, it's pretty much the same as, as, as Daniel said. We, uh, you know, I, I can't imagine like, you know, just, just going out there and, and, and searching for a co-founder. It's, you know, it's not, it's not an employee. It's not, uh, it's, it's just, you know, so much more than that. And, um, and and also you know before starting this we uh, we we also go back like about ten years of uh, of knowing each other so so yeah it was uh, you know it, it was again like a more of a natural decision rather than oh okay I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do this with you uh, in particular right so it it kind of just came about and um, in terms of doing it alone yes uh, again you know same same thing as Daniel said it would be so much more difficult to. Uh, pull this off and and to do it alone it's possible that it's doable uh, i don't know i wouldn't kind of uh, you know uh, obviously it is possible but um uh, you know probably i wouldn't know uh because uh, there were there were just so many things that um you know again two people having different minds different opinions um you just you know you push yourself to kind of to the next level and uh, uh you know you challenge each other in in, in so many ways that it helps the whole thing kind of get off the ground. Okay, uh, it's interesting you say that because you guys do. I mean, I have been in quite a quite interesting uh, conversations with you guys as founders, um, and you know, uh, with you and your co-founder, and and uh, you. I mean, you've been through kind of a lot of ups and downs because you have been through this two startup journey as well. So I think it's a it's a very interesting place to be. Marco, what about you? Your your co-founder isn't really somebody that you uh, you found by looking did you so violence pure pure violence <laughs> when i first time met tennis i wanted to put the pencil to his knee <laughs> he was a young officer and i was a cocky NCO with all of this cool ass experience mm -hmm. but um, it's actually trust uh, what the joins people together and, and also the pain of this suffering uh, on the problem what you want to solve you have to find people with the same mentality and it's, um, it's, it's, it's like a marriage. There are going to be ups and downs. Like in every marriage, there will be ups and downs. So what we, what we realized and what I personally have realized is that um, it's a team game, meaning that I cannot solve all the problems by myself. Mm -hmm. And I have my own weak points where I need to have additional people who I can trust uh, beside me who could help me uh, to give my very, very best. So, so yeah, and it's uh, one of the founders, one of the co-founders I know since, Jesus, 2000, uh, 2006. So it has been kind of like a really extremely long journey. So this is, so this is interesting because it's co-founders and I always tell people that, uh, you know, uh, co-founders will never have, um, let's say, equal parts to play. You will always have unequal parts and those parts keep moving about, you know, some of you will work harder and some of you will work less and then that shifts when you when when you know the work shifts so it's interesting to to hear that um and also you you know marco you've got more co-founders than uh, than one i think so you've kind of built your co-founding team based on vision and you know the fact that you guys are looking to solve that problem as well right so 
Yeah, it's a total of five co-founders, but the um, unique part is that um, the fence industry is really hard to ex uh, access. If, but if you're in, you're in. So combined, our team has the co-founder uh, co-founder team has more than 130 years of uh, combined relevant experience. And all this experience builds trust on the initial approach that the, the problem what we're solving, we actually know what we're doing. Okay, so this is interesting that you guys say that I have to say something about trust. This is something that my learning is and I try and pass it on to every founder I meet. And I learned this from Cristobal actually, the CEO of Wise Guys. And we always talk about trust and in humanity, we always say that, you know, you need to earn my trust, you need to earn my trust. But I think at one point you have to kind of go like, you have my trust. And then everything you do will reduce your trust or increase your trust, right? So you need to kind of go in with that trust um, uh, as well at some point. So I think a lot of you guys have shown that uh, because, I mean, trust is a made up thing in our head, right? I mean, uh, there's no indicator of trust. So, um, okay. So the, the, the next thing I want to, and again, a shout out to people who are watching us. You can type in the comments of Facebook and LinkedIn. You can ask questions directly to Yuri, Daniel, and Marco. They all are coming from different backgrounds, from different uh you know startups startups um so they've, they've started up separately differently um uh so if you have any questions you can ask them one question that i have is if you guys had like one thing to um you know one advice to tell yourself two years ago what would that be like if you had to if you had to go back in time and tell yourself one thing that hey don't do this or you know hire well or what whatever it be what, what, what would it be be like nike be like nike just do it yeah <laughs> okay that's the way you're not you're never going to be uh ready you got to be willing okay anybody else got anything you don't have to all answer the questions but if you have anything then let me know and then otherwise we move on to the next one well it's so cliche but we made a lot of mistakes but um, these mistakes was needed to to go further so i think it was a right journey okay. uh good so you make the mistakes uh you have anything to add yeah uh, i mean yeah I'm, I'm i'm with both of the guys here uh, because that that's how it works if you go back in time on on anything really um you know what you've done you know what you want to change and in my mind yes i would still do it i granted i would do a lot of things probably differently but uh yeah i would still you know i would still go and do it that's that's the end game what would you do differently than yuri this is my next question. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, you guys are just going from one question to another. It's right here. I've written it all down. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, the, 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 there are always things that, um, you know, when you when you look at in, in retrospective, kind of looking back on the things you've done or decisions you made, uh, you know, you always wonder what if. And uh, I would say probably... Uh, you know try and, and and validate the idea as i said earlier try and validate it as early as possible like humanly possible because that will either make it or break it really and um, uh, and then you know go out and and kind of try and iterate as fast as possible again you know don't get stuck in a in a certain loop trying to chase this um you know um, oh it's gonna work it's gonna work tomorrow maybe it's gonna work next month and, and, and things like that so try and kind of move a bit faster and iterate faster on different ideas uh so this is this is kind of the the main the main the main take this is what i would have done differently um mm -hmm. and, and you know and and you know you never know how it would work out or, or or not it could have been much worse i don't know uh but you never know uh but yeah marco anything any, marco daniel anything you guys have done differently <laughs> I, I wanted to add this part that um, our our this the market is kind of unique, the defense side of things. And uh, mm -hmm. one thing what I have actually learned from uh, SVG side is that the, the, the accelerator introduced me to the principles of, uh, of startup world. And now what we have done, we have taken this kind of like a defense industry where everything is done some ways under the rules. And we have kind of mixed up with the flexibility of what startup uh, well, provides. I mean, startup world is not like uh, startup world is not like uh, the the one single point of truth. So, one thing what I would also advise is that be ready to mix and mingle things. And 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 you know, it sounds like a cliche, 
But you have to think outside of the box. If you're going to do same patterns, you're going to repeat the same patterns than anybody else or everybody else have done. You can only repeat the same ways that, that they have done. And if you want to be like really, really good, you have to do something different. I, I know it sounds like Apple, but it's true. No, no, this is this is very interesting because I remember when you guys were running through the program, there was always this like conflict. I won't say conflict, but there was this conversation that oh, the, this this industry is different, and and this is not only an MOD thing. This is also we get it like with healthcare, we get it with like sustainability, we get it with like any industry. We, the people say, oh no, there's a there's a there's a particular way to do it. Uh, you know, telcos and banks are different. But I think what you mentioned is quite interesting. That if you don't take that step, and yes, you have to be aware that you're mixing it you are taking the startup world to the defense industry and what's happening is the defense industry is kind of learning or kind of just understanding like oh so to work with a startup we need to kind of be a little different as well and then you were you were smart enough to to be able to mix both of those worlds but a lot of a lot of startups are not able to take let's say the startup world into healthcare or the startup world into you know uh, legal which are like very traditional um, there is a certain problem for that. Everybody wants to be liked all the time. Like yeah. I, everybody wants to be liked by everybody, but you're you don't have to be liked by everybody. You're not an avocado or avocado, how you spell it. I don't know, but you know, that's the reality of things. Don't be an avocado. To, you know, be true to yourself. Okay, good. Uh, thanks, Marco. Anybody else wants to add anything to any of that? Because we have we have some questions coming in from the audience now as well. So I want to jump onto them as well. But uh, yeah, Daniel, were you going to say something? Yeah, I, I actually I have some additional, not from the original question, just to come to the last sentences. Uh, this mix things actually. Uh, in the beginning, what we wanted to make it never contained VR or any related VR thing. Uh, and during the summer of 2019, um, just an idea started to get more stronger. And uh, we get some feedbacks that it won't work. Uh, and this is maybe not the best way. Uh, people don't really want to do some VR things. And we did it. And basically, now this is the strongest selling point in, in our platform. So yeah. we had to make a risk, and it worked. <laughs> I remember I remember how you guys did it as well. You guys had it by accident as well. It was quite fun, actually, to see you guys combine something that somebody put <laughs> Which, which is interesting because to me that was one of your you know turning points. So one of the questions we have on from um, our audience is from uh, from Ilaria de Leche, Les, Le, Lecce. Um, and the question is, what was your zero to one step? So what made that needle move and you you know got a, a win, which you thought was like you know finally validation that you guys were on the right track and you didn't give up. And I'm happy for anybody to start over here, to be honest. It's open to you guys. Well, um, for us, it was actually simple. Um, 2017, we did the very first pitch to the uh, one of the end users and uh, took for them two, two and a half years to come back to us and say like, hey guys, do you remember the idea what you had? So we actually want it now. Mm. That was the start moment. So that was a start moment for you, Yuri. Did you was there one for you guys before or after the program, after the the acceleration program, or was it quite recent that you had this like zero to one step? Uh, it was it was after the program actually, yes. Um, and um, uh, well, yeah. And, uh, at the same time, it was quite recent, but pretty much the same thing happened. It was kind of a, a conversation that we had some long time ago, and then this person actually came back and then ended up being um, you know. Uh, one one of the one of the first customers. So it, uh, so yeah, it did did really work out in in the end, but uh, it did take time at the same time. So 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 it, it, okay, we're gonna come back to that. But you you raised a very good question, Daniel. Was there a zero to one step for you, like uh, that moved the needle? Yeah, I think I would separate it to to real different part. Uh, the one when we had the first customers, or when we had really. Um, good negotiations and it was cool and it was signed the contract and we built a, I would say the MVP or it was maybe more than an MVP. But previously and before the before the, the accelerator program, there was one other additional thing. Uh, that time we were working this project, that time it was just a project. 
uh, 11 people and 11 people work for free just because they believe it's something cool. That time we didn't know, okay, it's, uh, we have a lot of legal stuff um, because, you know, like you know, IP and stuff like that. But it was something what really pushed uh, the two co-founders, okay, we do something pretty cool and we maybe don't know what we are doing, but it's good. <laughs> Okay, so you guys had like two of them. One was after you set up like setting up a business and the other one is to, to egg you on. So I see that's a pretty, that's a pretty interesting thing. Um, and also kind of coming back to what Yuri said. So again, if you're listening to us, you want to ask questions, comment them. I'm asking them live. This is like, it's for free as well. I'm not charging anything to ask questions over here. Just, you can thank me with a beer later. Um, but <laughs> but, uh, but here's a question. Here's the part that Yuri kind of mentioned. And it's actually, I'm going to ask, the, the, the kind of the question I wanted to really ask was, uh, so all three of you went through like an accelerator program, right? And all of them, like Daniel and, um, and Yuri, you guys went through one in 2019. Marco, you went through one 2020. Daniel and Yuri were 100% in person, in Tallinn, uh, full, you know, hands-on experience with everybody. Uh, Marco, you guys were, you know, you guys had half, a, half the experience where you guys were um, in person before and after and then there was an online uh, an online element to so kind of describe to me like what did the accelerator bring to you guys and uh this is kind of coming from a statement that jury made and i'm going to come to that at the end of it as well but it, to somebody who's listening over here describe to them like what an accelerator is like why would somebody want to join it and why did you guys join it i mean <laughs> i kind of have to admit that you got me on the on a very weird time when I was in Singapore, I was just traveling back yeah. from India <laughs> and representing a company. And then there was like a student number asking like, hey, you guys are actually, you have some great idea. I was like, yeah, yeah, the company's producing really awesome stuff. And I kind of mixed it up. And when I realized, okay, now you're talking about this idea, what we had, I was kind of surprised when it came. And once it became clear what the accelerator provides. Uh, so tell the audience we, what the accelerator provides because some of the audience probably don't know what the what an accelerator provides. So tell them, so like, the, because you guys also kind of was a bit of a surprise for you, right? So the biggest thing that we received uh, was the background knowledge of, of everything what we were lacking. Uh, uh, how to do business canvas? How to do the very first? How to build up your KPIs? How to how to measure? How to build? What is the freaking one pager? What is pitch? I, I still have to admit that I hate uh, three minute pitches because I am a bit different. Yuri and Daniel laughing over there as well. They've been through your pain, but more in person. But uh, the point is that thanks to the accelerator, we uh, we received the necessary uh, kick in the nuts to move forward because it has to be painful. And uh, you you made us feel, not in a bad way, it was, um, it was uncomfortable. Uh, and then you kind of had to stretch the time because uh, going through the accelerator at the same at the same time, trying to engage the customers at the same time, build the product, but it shows that things can go even crazier, and you're ready for that eventually when you finish the accelerator. It's not the yeah. So that's it, basically. Okay. Any of you guys, Yuri, Daniel, what did you guys get from the accelerator, and we'll describe that for people who might not know, because I'm. Uh, yeah, look, basically, um, kind of the general take, you, you don't really need the acceleration program. But if you want to go out there and uh, kind of spend two years making mistakes and, um, you know, trying to iterate on things and, and trying to get there, then, you know, it's entirely up to you. Or you can pack all of that knowledge in three months and, and, and get so much more on top. And then basically you, you have the stamina kind of to, to go out there and do it. So uh, all, all, all the acceleration program kind of provides from, from my experience and from my point of view, it just, it accelerates things. It, it gives you um, so much knowledge that you would probably still get elsewhere, but in a short span of time. So you don't have to go out there and make your own mistakes. You have amazing mentors. You have amazing people from different backgrounds. Um, you know, telling telling you from from top of their experience how it's supposed to get done, and then again, it's entirely up to you whether you want to follow that advice, right? But uh, uh, but yeah, the, the the advice and the mentorship you get in the program is probably the the number one thing for me. 
Uh, it was, um, you know, absolutely amazing. It still is uh, because I, I, I turned to kind of to, you know, to many people that I got to know back in the acceleration program, even even two years later, you know, and uh, uh, and it is amazing. So, yeah. Uh, Daniel, anything else from these guys? Did you? Yeah, uh, my co-founder started to mention this whole accelerator program as a short MBA of our startup. So basically, yeah, we learn how to make business. And I totally agree with uh, Marco and Yuri. But one more thing what was, I think, really uh, important um, is, is the community, the network, the how we learn mistakes from those uh, other companies with who we were in the same batch. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, maybe they made some mistakes. I can say a few of Yuri's mistakes as well, but they can say a few mistakes of us. And it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, you can learn much yeah. more in a short time. And, and this is something like kind of that uh, Yuri mentioned, which is like, you know, he got his first zero to one move from a conversation he had two years ago and i think this is one thing that i see a lot of you guys um you 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 kind of do it during the program you do it a little bit before as well where you plant these seeds of conversations that you're having with like either mentors or or companies or people that you're speaking to or you know uh, to you know, the people that you're pitching to and you don't know what the outcome of that is and the outcome comes like two years later you know 18 months later you meet somebody or they meet you or they have a change in circumstance or something like that and i think it's really interesting for you to understand that every action that you do has a ripple effect which may or may not be something that you feel right now right and marco and daniel and yuri all three of you have demonstrated you know marco with his 2013 idea and then 2017 and 2020 um and i mean i, I want to kind of point out to the audience here uh, like, you know, just to kind of give, I mean, uh, Yuri, you guys came to our program, you guys raised a round after our program. Now you're with, you know, uh, your, your first customers, you're doing like, you know, pilots and, and contracts with them. Daniel, you guys came to our program last year as well. And you guys came with a very fresh understanding of what you want to do. You came with a very fancy pitch deck, but you know, uh, you still wanted to build something and you build something which is quite important because you didn't build something without validating it. And that's why when you build something, you built it with you know, the whole kind of immersive experience, which you wouldn't have got, got to if you had built something very early on without validating, right? And now you've signed your annual contracts with, uh, with you know, your first uh, big clients and things like that. So you're moving the needle there and it takes time. And Marco, you guys were probably, you know, you, you guys came to us 2000, well, this year, 2020. It seems like a long year. I'm huh? like, yeah, you came to this year, 2020. Um, and you guys uh, actually raised your first round, which was oversubscribed during the program. So you guys managed to do that. And you, I mean, you were in a different industry, but you didn't even have a product ready. You were, you know, you you basically sold yourself with the vision, uh, with the, you know, with 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 the fact that you had five people who were completely aligned with what what you guys were looking to do, and you sold that to an investor. So I think it's really important for people to understand that. Um, do you have this ability to do that even if you don't have, let's say, a product or revenue and things like that? So I think it's great that you guys managed to do all of that while still having co-founders and teams and, uh, and you know, partners and, and, and COVID restrictions and things like that, right? All while also having a good time because you don't really want to do um, just that. So um, this is why I was trying to kind of get at what, the, what does the acceleration program bring to it. And, it's, and, and Daniel, you mentioned something about helping each other so for example uh, both of you i mean uh yuri and daniel were in, a, in the program with six other nationalities marco you guys were in the program with five or six nationalities as well in fact i remember um, Syx was helping one of the other turkish um, based founders to sell their products in in your country and and vice versa as well so so we, you actually got a bit of help from each other as well right so um i have one more question before we i mean Soyan uh, has asked a question. We're, we, we already answered it, so but I'm going to mention the fact that Soyan, we've seen your question. What would you do? One one thing that you would do differently if you could go back in time. Um, but the, the next question I have is, um, what do you? What is your advice to get most out of the accelerator program? This is from uh, Tal One One Two. What would you be like? One thing that you say like to get the most out of the program, if anything. 
embrace it. Yuri? <laughs> so basically what I mean by that, you have to you participate uh, with 100% effort and, and keep in mind that uh, everything what uh, you will experience in uh, in accelerator program is necessary and required for the future what awaits you, you and okay. your company. Yuri, you had something. Thanks, Margot. That's actually pretty good. And I also like the fact that when you guys were there, you guys split it between your founder or co-founder as well. Yuri, over to you. You were, you were mentioning something as well. Uh, yeah, I was going to say pretty much the same, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to add uh, kind of, you know, stay open to, to all the feedback you're getting. And, um, you know, just for three months become kind of a sort of a sponge and take it all in. Because even if you feel that this is not important or that is not important at the time, it will get important at some stage. And, and believe me, uh, and, then, and then you just reflect on it and you think, oh, it's good that I kind of heard that or, or we had that discussion because now it comes in handy and now I need it. So just, you know, get, get as much as you possibly can from all the, um, you know, from all the guys who are there to help you um, get off the ground, get all this mentorship and, uh, you know, just stay open and get that feedback. Okay. Uh, Daniel, do you want to add anything or you're good? Mm, I'm pretty much the same. Okay. Uh, maybe just one one thing. Uh, yes, be open and um, get all the feedback that you have. But basically, I think you have to know your way. So you don't change all the time your your way. Uh, we did in a short term, uh, but then we realized that okay, we have uh, our own way. So even in an accelerator program, there are. Uh, lots of lots of mentors. They know their perspective, but you know your business and you know your your journey. So this is interesting. Well, and I remember Yuri, you guys also were very very sure of what you guys were doing, and you kind of continued doing it, which was actually quite. It, it takes a like I said, you know, you have to be you have to take it all in, but at the same time, you make the corrections the way you need to, you know, the way you think you have validation towards. So that's good. Um, one of my final questions right now. Um, is um how do you get people to work for you with for no money like where does the money come from so you know give me some give me give give, give people who are listening to a bit of tips like okay these guys are all talking amazing stuff they've been together for five six years who paid them what where does the money come from so if you want to share some interesting tips you can share them as well over here because i know like money always gets uh, people interested in conversation no? oh. I mean, it sounds funny and it sounds stupid, but if you put effort uh, under the things what you do, uh, then the luck will kind of join because you are doing correct things and then the money eventually will come. I mean, before receiving our very first uh, like hard commitments, uh, I was like chewing my fingers off uh, like two days before because I had to pay salaries to my people who are working for me. And, and I was like, it was a really stressful time. But once this kind of door opened, it, the money started to come. And the other thing is also how to get people to work for you first. Well, we are in defense industry. So we do really heavy background checks. Uh, that means that everyone who I hire, I will let, never let go because they are a valuable part of the team. So you have to find people uh, in your company who are willing to suffer hard times with you because there will be good times and then everybody will win from those things so marines have a saying that everybody wants to uh, go to heaven but nobody wants to die exactly. so you have to literally have some people who are willing to die together with you okay great so marco great insights there daniel yeah i think uh, well it, it just two things uh yeah i'm really really thankful of our core team which is uh, right now four or five people a few of them you can make some contract uh, maybe like uh, with a the salesperson they they can get some percentage of the money uh but it's really important that those core team is is with you and i think we cannot be anywhere without uh, our little team uh, but the other thing, how money comes from, I think during the accelerator program, we was really focusing to investment. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that we get 
lots of time. Okay, the first two months we don't pick about investors, but we wanted, and we I don't know, we didn't know how, how what is the other way that we can earn some money, and then just some thing changed in our mind. Then we started to concentrate the customers, uh, and we right now kind of kind of bootstrap of our our company. And now is the time to really scale the, the business with an investor. And scaling is much better than a lot, uh, yeah, than just get some money because you have to pay your bills or something like that. Okay. So, so make sure you're asking for money for the, at the right time. Yuri, over to you. Anything? How do you yeah, think uh, I mean, absolutely. Yeah, you know, there are, there are good times and bad times. And, uh, uh, you know, as long as the core team stays and, um, uh, you know, going back to what Marco said, you, you don't look for people just based on their skill set because, I mean, there are a lot of people out there who are skillful enough, who who can learn at the end of the day, right? But but you look for people who share the mindset, who, who are a cultural fit and who believe in the same thing because these are the people who would stay with you no matter what, and, and, and they would share that belief and, and take it through the bad times, right? Uh, so, and, and, and we had more or less, uh, you know, that, that kind of situation. So there was a time when we were, we were still bootstrapping, that was uh, before the round, and, and basically we didn't have money to, uh, to, to pay the salary. And, um, you know, the, the core of the development team actually kind of stayed and, and, and stuck with us. Uh, just you know, for the for, for the simple idea, they they didn't know whether the thing would ever happen, um, kind of that that kind of thing, right? So it was at a, at a stage that uh, it could either we could either make it or break it, and um, you, you know you you didn't know what's going to happen in a month or two, but you know the, as long as the people are there, uh, it's all going to be fine. Okay, great. So I mean, what everybody one of you is telling me right now is that if you're saying like, hey, I need to raise the money from my investor to pay the bills. You're probably stuck with the i won't say the wrong team but the team that is going to be like more difficult for you to manage in the long term right so i think like I, i'm not taking anything against people getting paid for their work but i think it's important to understand that you got to start with the vision and then the money will kind of you know find the money afterwards and i think all of you guys did that at least that what i remember you guys uh, all did that okay finally we've got like a um, couple of minutes left i want to start with um, each of you, what are your next steps? What are your asks? If you guys have any asks right now, what are you guys looking for help? Uh, we have a you know a, 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 a audience over here. Maybe some of them can help you. So let's start with uh, Daniel over to Marco and then to Yuri. Daniel, you guys got an ask? What's happening next for you? Well, basically, we still wanted to focus on customers. So with huge corporates, um, if someone interested in a thing, then just uh, search in YouTube, Cyax Rutino. Uh, you will get to understand what we are doing. And also in, in QA 2021, we probably will open a seed round. So if there is any investor who think uh, can be a partner of us, um in in our journey then probably reach me out okay great thanks a lot daniel mark over to you most of our uh, needs are satisfied uh the biggest thing was uh, probably might mention the actual facts that uh, we're looking for front-end and back-end developers to join our team so if anybody feels like this calling they can reach out to me and um, regarding next actions i cannot say much otherwise i have to you know, do the things that I do the best. But uh, one thing what I would like to point out, that this is my side mark to everybody who wants to try something. Please get your foundations right. You cannot build a skyscraper on tilted foundation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yuri, you guys, what's up? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I agree with the with the foundation part. And, uh, and this is exactly our kind of next steps. Um, uh, you know, from now on, take take whatever works and, and whatever is validated and just scale it up and take it to the next step. And this is this is what we are currently doing um, in order where we, uh, you know, might need to ask for help uh, from uh, from any, everyone in the audience is we are currently looking to uh, uh, find someone with the with the marketing and sales expertise, kind of more of an executive position 
again to uh, you know to, to take all the validated ideas and, and and just take it to the next level. So if you know anyone who, who could be a potential fit, please reach out to me anytime. I uh, would be um, super happy to talk. All right, and so I, we now know what you guys are doing. I'll also point out that we are at Startup Wise Guys. We 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 actually have an online pre accelerator that's happening in the next few weeks. You can go to our website, startupwiseguys.com. You can look at the programs and you can go to online pre accelerator. So if you're very early stage, you have an idea. I mean, you know, Yuri went through it, uh, HiVyD went through it. Um, you can apply for that online pre accelerator. We still, you know, we I think the deadline is over, but if you apply now, we can still look at the application and see if we can squeeze you in, especially if you're looking to start your startup, you have an MVP ready, you have a team and things like that. We also work uh, with uh, with various partners and we do online events that can help you with your ideas, how to take them to the next level. So keep an eye out on our startupwiseguys.com website. You can also join the newsletter and join our Facebook pages and Instagram to get knowledge of when we're actually doing these events. So they will help you. Uh, we currently have a sustainability program in, in Estonia and in Tallinn that uh, is being launched as well. We have Italy where we're doing B2B SaaS and we're also going to be scouting now for cybersecurity. So if you're into cybersecurity, you have a startup, you have an idea, you have a team, you can email me, uh, Farid, or you can go to our website and actually apply on to the program Cybersecurity Accelerator and you can apply there and then somebody will get in touch with you. So this is what uh, everybody is, um, has kind of gone through one way or the other. Uh, I can tell you one thing, uh, you know, firstly, a, a kind of a round of applause for these guys because uh, startups are all sexy from the out, from the outside, but from the inside, I've seen each and every one of you guys chew your fingers off, cry in a corner, sleep underneath your desk. Um, uh, and, and I think that's what, you know, it's like they say, don't call them a unicorn, call them a camel because it's a long journey. And all of you guys need special skills and stamina and you know persistence and 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 just hard work to get there. And I don't mean hard work as in working long hours, just like mentally it takes a lot out of you. So uh, thanks a lot. And I'm sure that all the advice you guys have given will help people who are watching this. We'll also hopefully be able to kind of uh, make this available on our YouTube channel for people to watch it again so you can share the links. But I want to take this time, Marco, Daniel, Yuri. Uh, I've had amazing times with you guys in the past. Uh, it's been great to spend an hour. I wish we could have had more of the founders here. We're going to try and see if we can do a little roundtable with a lot more of you. But uh, from my end, that's pretty much it. Also, keep an eye out on the Startup Estonia website. There'll be some, some programs being released, some idea hacks happening in the next few weeks uh, where you guys can participate from Estonia as well. Uh, I also want to thank the Ministry of Defense. I want to thank Louise who is working the tech technology, all this amazing camera stuff is happening because there's a person doing this um, and also listening to all this talk that I'm doing right now. There we go. There's Louise. Um, and I'm hoping this was, this was interesting for Louise as well. I thought it'd be bored out of your head. Um, and thanks for everybody. Thanks to Startup Estonia, to Wise Guys, um, the whole team, and all you audience members. Thanks for asking your questions, for joining us. We will see you guys hopefully soon, because I think this is a great thing to do. We should do more of these. Um, thanks a lot, guys. Stay safe, wear a mask, um, and we'll see you guys uh, hopefully soon in person. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thanks a lot for...